Butterflies and this video is going to be a collective review of all of the books that I've read so far in November. Stop looking at me like that. <laughs> so today I'm going to be doing a collective review on the three books that I've read so far in November. And I was going to do, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do like single reviews and I was like well let's just put it all together because some of them might not be that long and it doesn't make sense for me to do like a two minute video and post it. So I like let's just put it all together in a you know so far this month I've read blah 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 kind of thing. So like I told you guys like all month this month is Alzheimer's Awareness Month and it's Native American Heritage Month and this month I've been dedicating my reading to books about Alzheimer's or books by or about Native Americans and that's all I've been reading this month and I also said I wanted to start off my videos with kind of like a fact about like either Alzheimer's or about Native Americans just something just to start every all of my videos off this month that I wanted to do which haven't been too many videos this month so here's my fun facts for this video and this fact also kind of coincides with the first book that I'm going to be talking about because if I hadn't read this book I probably would have not known anything about it I just thought that this little girl was just like so amazing well I don't want to call her a little girl because I mean, she's 13, so I don't know, should I call her a young adult, like a young woman? But she just, like, really just blew my mind. The girl that I'm talking about is Anna Lee Rain Yellowhammer. She's 13 years old. Are you okay? She's just 13 years old, and she is the leader of, like, the biggest, like, protests in Native American history like in like a century. She started a petition to stop the Dakota Access Pipeline from being ran through Standing Rock Reservation and that same pipeline would have to run you bet not touch it. Yeah. Oh my god. Today's not the day. <laughs> that same pipeline will be running through the Missouri River two times. It will be going like pretty much like this way and then this way. It runs through it twice. The Missouri River is the main source of water for that whole reservation. Thousands of people plus millions of people upstream that that is their only source of like clean water. And it's just like if anything were to go wrong with that pipeline, anything, then that is oil that is poisoning this water for millions of people and then you would have no drinking water at all you would have no clean drinking water there once that happens and I just thought at 13 it blew my mind because I'm like at 13 years old she decided that I'm gonna protest and I care about you know my community I'm gonna do something about this I know me at 13 years old I wasn't worried about anything political going on at 13 so that is what really like really blew my mind was that this girl is just 13 years old and she is making like big moves like this and it's just like I was like oh my god and if I would not have read this first book that I'm about to talk about in a second I would have known nothing about it so it's just like looking at the stuff she's doing at 13 and the stuff that me and like other people were doing at 13 year old because at 13 I was not thinking about anything political going on I couldn't even tell you what was going on in the world when I was 13 I couldn't tell you so I mean just to see that she took that time from her day to just be like, yeah, I'm 13, but my 13 year old self can make a difference and I'm going to do that instead of just standing by and watching nothing happen. And I just was like, yes, like, yes, you know? So I just wanted to dedicate that fun fact today to Anna Lee Rain Yellowhammer because I'm just like, I'm blown back by her courageousness and I'm just like, I don't even know her, but I'm like just so proud of her that at 13 years old, that she decided to stand up for her community and do something about it. The first book that I read this month is Not Your Princess, Voices of Native American Women, and it is edited by Lisa Charlie Boy and Mary Beth Leatherdale. And I actually picked this book up on accident. Um, I gave this a five out of five stars. And it wasn't, I said accident because I wasn't looking for this book. It was another book that these same two people edited. It was um, Dreaming in Indian. I mentioned it that I was like looking for it like in my TBR that that would kind of be a late entry if I found it. But um, I went to my library and they didn't have it but they had this book and I didn't know anything about this book. So they had this one so I'm like okay let me check this out and let me see you know how I feel about it. Even though I was looking for Dreaming in Indian I'm like that's okay. I'll you know read this because it seems interesting and I'm like it, it, it looks beautiful. I'm like okay let's do this. I 
loved this book so much. I think that goes without saying since I did give it five stars. This book was just so amazing. It was so beautiful. And when I say beautiful, I don't mean just words written. I mean, it has so many different kind of formats in this book. Like, the words were beautiful, but at the same time, the pages itself was beautiful. Because at some points, we have, like, whole pages that are, that are like, decorated and just artistic. Like, let me, let me find. Let me find something. First of all, the inside cover is like this. And it's very beautiful. But that's not what I'm talking about. Like, there are some, like, whole pages that are, like, just beautiful. Like, this for instance. Look how... Look how beautiful, look how beautiful that is. There's another one, it's like, it looks almost like it's like water painted. It's just, it's such an amazing book and it's so beautiful. They even had, look at this, look how beautiful that is, okay? There's so many different formats into this book. There's like, um, there's poetry in it. There's like, like almost like interview sections. There's like, I'm sorry y'all, Kalia's just, she's excited, okay? Um, there's parts in this book where it's like, like, it almost looks like comic strips. There's, like, it's so many different formats in this in this book. And it's, like, written by so many different Native Americans. So many different Amer Native Americans that put their input in on this book. And I mean, like, from all different kind of walks of life. We have professional athletes. We have, um, like, teachers and scientists. And we have freaking, um, like, some, like they have, um... Um, oh my god, y'all, I'm drawing a blank, I'm drawing a blank because I'm tipping my tongue what I'm trying to say. Olympic gymnasts that input in on this, there are actresses and like models and just all different types of people from all different kind of walks of life and that is what really like really personalized this book. You've got so many different women telling so many different stories and it's just like, it's almost like story time, you know, it, like during the holiday time, around story time. Since Thanksgiving is coming up, it's kind of like just sitting around the table and just telling stories. And that's what it was like. And it was just so personalized reading this. And I just really, 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 really loved this. And I really enjoyed it. I'm so glad that I actually read it to this book because I'm, I still want to see, I still want to read Dreaming in Indian, but I can't find it in the library. So I'm probably going to have to end up buying it. But this was just, oh my God, this was so amazing. I really loved it. Like, I really loved it. So if you're a person that, isn't like afraid of like different formats being put in you know into one kind of book it's like all kind of different format it might be a different format on every page if you're not a person that that bothers then this is this is for you you can do it but i know some people that don't like to read books where it's like a bunch of different kind of formats jumbled together they don't like that but i really enjoyed this and i think this really added to the book with the different types of formats because it really showed you the different types of people there was even so many different artists and like just illustrators and and putting in this book as well it was just so amazing so um i recommend this book i think that goes without saying that i recommend this it's just so amazing and i loved it then the second book that I read this month is An Absent Mind by Eric Real, and I actually read this book on my Kindle, so I'm going to have to put up a picture for you guys so you guys can check it out. And I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. There was just one big thing that I did not like, which is why I had to bump it down a star, because I just, I'm going to get into that. But first off, um... An Absent Mind is an Alzheimer's awareness story where we follow Saul and his family through his process from actually finding out he had Alzheimer's to the end of the line. Um, and you guys know ultimately right now Alzheimer's is a death sentence. Um, some last longer than others but you know but we follow from start to finish through his journey through his family's journey what everybody had to deal with and that is like a big thing I liked about this is that it's told in multiple perspectives of his family it's told from four different people's perspectives from Saul his wife Monique his daughter Florence I think is her name and their son Joey I think I hope I nailed that but it's told from those four different perspectives and I think that was really good because you get the chance to see that Alzheimer's doesn't just affect the person that it's happening to. You know, it's not just the patient that is affected. It's taking a toll on the whole family and everybody deals with it differently in different ways. So that really added to the story that it was told like that. And then it's cut into three different parts. The discovery, um, coping, and um, the, final, the final stop. And that to me made it seem like the story was moving faster as we're going through the different parts it felt like it was fast paced even though the story isn't long itself i think the book was only 276 pages somewhere around that area but it wasn't long but even though it wasn't that long 
it felt like you were reading it like really 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 fast and that really boosted my reading self-esteem because you know when you feel like you're reading you're going through a book really fast it makes you feel good about yourself you don't feel like you're taking forever to read the book so that was like really good i think if i would have just really sat there like say i didn't have Kalea or something and i just sat there like from morning to night i probably could have finished in one sitting but that wasn't the case but even then i think i finished this in two days maybe three two or three days it was really good i really really felt compassionate towards Saul in the beginning watching him you know actually go through everything going through his tests going through his moments where he wasn't sure what he did and watching how other people started to change how they interacted with him because of his diagnosis and it's just Eric Real did a really good job of making me feel feel connected to these characters because i felt like he was a part of, of of my family like you know i was there dealing with him it just it just really hit home watching all of his mood swings and his like confused moments because my great grandmother she had alzheimer's and i like i was like i think maybe seven or eight when she passed but you know i, I used to remember her having her mood swings too where it was like she would go through this month where she felt like she didn't know you and she would get just really aggressive like she wouldn't come in the house if it was my mom sometimes but she's like i don't know you and it, i i see you know I, I i can relate to that you know i understand but then she also had these moments where to me they were like really funny moments and even now we laugh about it like she'll eat her breakfast with her coffee and she was only allowed to have one cup a day but she was swear to god she never had it she could be just finished Five minutes later, where's my coffee? I didn't have it. And even now, we laugh about that. Like, I just, I, it just, it really hit home because I could really relate, you know? And I really, really liked how the author took the time. Are you done? I really like how the author took the time to um, explain to people that may not know about how Alzheimer's works. He took the time to really add in there the doctor explaining to the family members about how things work, the different stages, what's going on with your body when this happens. But he did it in a way where it didn't seem like you were reading it out of a textbook. You know, it seemed, and he put it in a way where you can be engaged and not feel like you're in school. He put it in a way where you can listen and like you could read but not feel like you were in school sitting in a classroom, you know, being forced to learn about something you may not be interested in. So I really liked how he did that, how he added that into the story. Now, the big thing that I hated about this, which is what made me drop it one star, was that I feel like we were supposed to kind of ignore the fact that Saul was abusive towards Monique before the Alzheimer's thing happened. I felt like we were supposed to like kind of just go past that and just ignore that that happened. She literally, you know, said and explained that he pretty much used to buy her stuff all the time to kind of buy her. And that he alienated her from her friends over time because they would speak French to each other. And he didn't under 100% uh, uh, understand French, so he wouldn't know what they were talking about. So he kind of alienated her from her French-speaking friends because he couldn't understand what they were saying. Which I'm like, that's selfish as shit, just because you don't understand the saying, how can you take her friends away from her? Then we get into the fact that he refused to let her go to college and get a college degree. He refused to let her get her college degree, but at the same time, he would kind of belittle her and, you know, make her seem like she was stupid. But you won't let her get, a, a, you didn't let her go into school and get her a degree because you felt like she needed to be at home. Um... But at the same time, that doesn't mean you need to make her feel like she's stupid and that she doesn't understand the world. And of course, she 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 literally said he's overbearing and he's controlling. And I'm just, I just was wondering why she married him in the first place because he was like this when she met him. And you married him and you stayed married to him. So it's like, okay, I mean, what is this advocating that we should just, you know, I, I mean, it makes it seem, it, it almost made it seem like it was all right because she learned to love him over time and it's like i'm not with that if he was like this when you met him you should have kept it moving so she shouldn't have i'm sorry and i really i really went from being compassionate of him to hating him as a person just because of the way that he treated her and i understand i trust me i fully understand that the disease is making him paranoid and making him angry and giving him these mood swings and i understand that but 
that doesn't make up for how you treated her before all of this started happening, before your Alzheimer's even set in. This is this happened before all of that, you know? So it kind of made me hate him as a person to read that because I'm like, what kind of person are you? Don't get me wrong, he had his sweet moments. You know, it's not like he was this terrible person, but at the same time, he did things like that and I felt like we were supposed to just ignore that and just, you know, kind of put that to the back of our head as, and that was okay. So, yeah, that was like a, a, a big thing for me and I just... But at the same time, I still think it was a really good book. That was the first book I ever read about Alzheimer's because there aren't many out there. There aren't many Alzheimer's, like, awareness books out there. It's, it's really not. It's hard to find. But... I still enjoyed it. That's why I still gave it four out of five stars. Even though that was a big part that I did not like. And because throughout the book he keeps doing these things. But I can't really blame him for the stuff that he's doing while he's going through the Alzheimer's. Because like I said, Alzheimer's, it fucks with your brain. You know, it eats your brain. It makes, it makes you have these mood swings and, you know, these temper tantrums and things. I understand that. So I can't hold that against him. But the shit he did before, I was that was not cool. But at the same time, this is still a really, really good book that can really bring awareness for a lot of people if you don't really understand Alzheimer's and you want to know more about Alzheimer's. I still think this is a really, really good book. It is an adult novel, and I know a lot of booktube is like YA oriented, but this was really, really, really good. You know, it wasn't, it was fast paced. It had a really fast paced plot, which was really good. It's very informational, at the same time, seeming non textbook informational. It doesn't seem like you're reading a boring book that you don't want to read it's very 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 good and it's very immersive is it and it really does the story itself really does captivate you but and i really like that we got to see from every family member's um point of view how they were dealing with things and what was going through their minds and what they were struggling with while this was going on to Saul. and i really really enjoyed that and i do recommend this book and i did recommend this like to all of my friends on goodreads like i, I did so I want to recommend it to you guys too. I really did enjoy it. That was the only thing I saw that I did not like was that I felt like we were supposed to kind of just forget that of the emotional and the mental abuse that Saul did put in on Monique. And I just, that wasn't cool. But it, I, I still recommend it because of the content. And then the last book that I read this month, like well, so far, and it was the most disappointing book that I've read this month so far and I hope no other book I read this month is this disappointing. I only gave this book a 1 out of 5 stars and it's the Pocahontas John Smith story by Pocahontas Wright Edmonds or Pocahontas Edmonds Wright something like that. I'm not you'll see on the page. I'm just guys my expectation is shot. Like after this book I don't even feel like reading the other Pocahontas book that I have on my shelf because I'm just I'm scared to even like, first of all, I feel so misled, okay? The title is The Pocahontas John Smith Story. So you would think that this whole book would be about Pocahontas and John Smith's relationship with each other, no matter what it is. No, it is not. We had maybe like three or four pages all together of Pocahontas and John Smith together. That's probably that's probably what exactly what we had and this was kind of a short story because um i didn't really realize that this book was, is not really a whole novel it's almost like um somebody's journal i don't want to say it's john smith's journal but i think it is it's like his journey it's like journals like converted into this book so it, it it's not a long book uh i think according to good reasons 49 pages i can't really tell on my kindle because sometimes the kindle books like looking at the page numbers don't add up so yeah first of all the introductory was completely unnecessary because the whole introductory chapter was about the author and him being a, a descendant of Pocahontas and where his name came from and where she may or may not be buried. Pocahontas herself, where she may or may not be buried. That was the introduction. And I didn't need that. That didn't add to the story. It didn't add to the book. So I felt like that was unnecessary. And like I did say, it was barely about Pocahontas and John Smith barely the first half of the book was almost all about just john smith and how he was trying to rise up the chain of command that's pretty much what the whole book was about up from them leaving england to actually coming to america that is what the hell it was about it was about him and then um like i said the three or four pages they may have like all together collectively 
with him and Pocahontas' relationship was basically him meeting her, her saving his life, and um, pretty much he kind of looked at her as like a, a little sister almost type. It didn't seem like he looked at her as like a love interest like the Disney movie would say. And Pocahontas, But Pocahontas did seem like she had like a crush on him, but John Smith really looked at Pocahontas more as like a little sister. And he did say he couldn't, like, he couldn't believe that she's such a sweet girl. And she was raised by savages. And I, I, I'm kind of offended by that. Just because it hit me. I'm like, wait. Yeah, that's all the first half was about. And then the second half of the book was about something I knew nothing about. Now, y'all have to understand, with Pocahontas, the only thing I've known about Pocahontas is the Disney movie my whole life. Y'all have to understand that now. So I knew nothing about this John Rolfe person, okay? That's the second half of this book. It's about John Rolfe and Pocahontas and how they got married and he fell in love and he had children, all of that. I knew nothing about him, so I'm like, who is this person that's with Pocahontas? I'm like, I felt cheated, because I'm like, I want her and John Smith. I don't want you, you know? But you can't change history, and I'm kind of pissed off that Disney tried to flip this like this didn't happen. You know, I understand it's kids or whatever, so you got to kind of make it kid-friendly, but you could kind of stay true to the story. And it's like, now I'm like, Pocahontas is such a lie. Even though I'm always love that movie, I'm still like, that is just such a lie. Now that I think about it. So basically this whole book is mostly just about how England took over. Like how they just came over and took over. That's pretty much what the whole book is about. Like the, the majority mass of this book is about how they came over and they started building settlements. And they started taking this and taking that and fighting this and fighting that. That's basically what this whole book is about. And it's like why the fuck name it the Pocahontas John Smith story if it's really not about them. So the angle has probably changed because I have a screaming baby that's trying to put stuff in her mouth. And my battery was about to die, so I had to switch batteries out. So this, I'm, I'm pretty sure the angle has changed. But anywho, the sensitive structure was just really, really bad. And trust me, the, I'm not one to usually pay attention to stuff like that. But it was really hard to ignore with this. It literally just looked like, like they copied and pasted somebody's journal and just maybe changed a few things around so it wouldn't be like just... 100% horrible to read, but it was it was still really bad. It was like really really bad to read It's like bad to the point where if you're not like playing paying close attention while you're reading it You will get mixed up and it will sound like freaking gibberish if you're not really playing close close attention while you're reading it So yeah, um, obviously I don't recommend this. It was just terrible The only good thing about this was that it just made Disney look like shit because, I mean, they turn it into this perfect love story. So when I read this, I felt cheated. And I feel traded on. I feel turned on. So, um, yeah. Um, it, the only thing that it was good for is that you actually, like, really know the story of Pocahontas. Which, I mean, I wish the Disney one was really how it went. Even though we know that's not true. But, oh, my God. I just felt treated just so cheated when I just read this it was just bad it was terrible don't read it don't ever read it and I mean I guess I can't complain too much because I'm pretty sure I got this for free in the Kindle store so I can't complain 100% guys I'm so sorry for the noise I'm so sorry for the noise because my co-host is just so rude and she is just so loud and she's just so unapologetic and I'm just I'm sorry and she she don't care so um yeah that's all i have for you guys today don't forget to like share and subscribe and i will see you guys next time comment below what you guys think about the, my books that i read so far this month if you would be picking any one of them up hopefully it's not the book behind the john smith story but we're gonna leave that alone and um yeah i'll see you guys next time bye be happy with yourself